When it comes to Plants vs. Zombies tier lists, I've got it going on. Last time I did a Zombies tier list, and the time before that I did a Plants tier list. Today, I'm doing a Levels tier list. That's right, all 50 Adventure Mode levels I'm ranking all of the best to the absolute worst. As a disclaimer, like I always say, this is a tier list that is specifically focused on speedrunning. If you see a level in a spot that you don't like it, it's probably because of some speedrunning reasons. All of these levels will be ranked based on how fun they are, mostly, and then also how hard they are. Because a lot of times, whenever you're running PvZ, it's not that hard. But some of these later roof levels are actually pretty difficult. Not only that, but it also depends on how awkward the level is. For example, 5-1 is, is quite awkward, like 3-1 is also quite awkward. So depending on how awkward the level is, or how fun it is to play, or how weird it is to play, that will be its ranking. S tier is for I like it, F tier is for I hate it, you can probably figure out in-betweens. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. 1-1. This is the most easy C tier of my life. Essentially, 1-1 is kind of just an RNG check. You can't control anything in this level except for when you plant pea shooters. That's about it. Uh, otherwise, you kind of just have to hope that this level's good. I mean, even if it's not good, you still have a whole three and a half hours to make up the time. So it's definitely not influential in any way. It's just meh. It's mediocre. 1-2 is kind of like 1-1, one, one, but a little bit more consistent, and it also has a couple of different strat varieties. For example, you can do 3-3, three, three, you can do 3 uh, pea shooters, sorry, and you can also do uh, letting a- you can also let a mower go. So, yeah, some, some strat variety with this one. I'm gonna actually put it higher than 1-1 one, one because of that. It's a little bit more fun because you have more space and also sunflowers, so you can plant more pea shooters and do it faster. Next up is 1-3. This is also one of kind of the just whatever levels. This is another level with a low amount of control and mostly RNG. A lot of the RNG that does factor into this though is based on the mower kill that you try to get with the repeater. Not the repeater, with the uh, lawnmower. You try to kill the conehead with the lawnmower. I don't know why I said repeater, holy. Yeah, no, repeater's not in this level. Actually, I'll put it in B tier. It, it's, it's better than these two by a large margin because you have Cherry Bomb and you have the, the lawnmower kill that you can go for. Sometimes it doesn't work out, and when it doesn't work out, you can feel like this level gets worse. But in general, I think it's a little bit more fun than these other two. Next up, we have 1-4, and 1-4 is sucky. I hate 1-4 so much. I, I personally hate this level. This is a D tier level for me. The reason why is because you have no shovel to work with at all, and it also is really weird to like plant things in the way of zombies to try to get double mower manip. Essentially, double lawnmower uh, manip is where you try to let go of two lawnmowers that are that you try you try to let go of two lawnmowers that form a clean cherry bomb, like the one uh, rows one and two, rows one and five, and rows five and four, but. Uh, you're never gonna let go of row 3 because that's middle manip and middle manip is sad. But yeah, 1-4 is, uh, also a little bit tricky to do it on, like do mower kills in general on, so you're looking at using walnut like a couple of times, and if you don't get anyone spawning there, it's really sad. And usually what happens is someone will spawn there before the walnut is ready to go. So again, this level just, I don't like it very much at all. 1-5. I love exploding nuts. This level is actually a really good example of the 50% rule, and it's pretty fun most of the time. The only issue that I would have is it's completely RNG-based which plants you get. Most of the time, you get regular walnuts. Sometimes the game will be cracked and give you like six or seven explodo nuts in a row. And then sometimes what it'll do is it'll be really funny, give you one explodo nut, and then never show you the face of an explodo nut ever again. So yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty okay. It, I would say it's like, it's higher than all of the other day, day levels so far. <laughs> Next up is 1-6, and this is better than 1-4 because it has shovel. In my opinion, I think that it's like B tier-ish. It's, it's more fun than 1-3, I'll give it that. It's more fun than 1-3 three for sure so the things about this the things about this level that i like it's got the shovel so it's easier to do mower kills and it has some pretty good opportunities for double mower manip 
and then also you are generally able to just cherry bomb uh, pretty easily in this level because you have a lot of you can get down a lot of sunflowers really easily But the thing that I hate about this level is vaulters and that just can't push it any higher than B tier Unfortunately vaulters are kind of just slow in any percent um, They're slow everywhere, but they're not as slow as cone heads. The thing with cone heads is They don't jump so They're 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 an easy threat to take care of vaulters are faster with the added risk of they are able to jump and they're fast. So again, 1-6, not able to go any higher than B tier because of uh, <laughs> the way that it just sucks. Next up is 1-7, and 1-7 is my least favorite two flag level in the game. It is really, really bad. I don't like this level because I suck at it. <laughs> It's, I think it's worse than 1-4. Uh, actually, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's worse than 1-4. But it is really bad for a two-flag level. Um, I really don't like this level in general. This level it forces you to use Snowpea, which is slow, and also has Vaulters, which are also slow. But they're faster than Coneheads, so you can hope for more Vaulters. But you don't want Vaulters in the first flag. It's really weird. But in general, I think 1-7's just a not great stage, in my opinion. So, yeah, with that said, pretty easy D tier. I'm moving on. 1-8 is a fantastic level. I love 1-8. 8 tier, easily. Um, this is much better than 1-7. One, one much better than 1-7. And Chomper? Like, oh boy, man. I love Chomper so much. Don't even get me started on Chomper. I should have ranked Chomper A in my plant seal list, but I didn't. I don't know why. Double Mower Manip in this level is super easy, and there's like six zombies total in the final wave, so even if you miss Double Mower Manip, it's probably not that big of a deal. And you are able to get up a lot of sunflowers so that you can like chomper every wave past six. So getting up a lot of choppers and pea shooters and just in general, it's a really fun flag, uh, one flag level, a really, really fun one flag level for sure. And then finally one nine, at least before we get to horror. Um, one nine is actually really good as well. I'm going to put it up in A tier as well. But it's better than 1-8 because it's two flags and Repeater and Chomper are such a duo, man. I love this duo. And you will see this later on with some of the pool levels, but this is one of my favorite formats ever. Two flag levels, you plant a bunch of sunflowers, you plant some Repeaters for defense, and then during the second flag, Chomper, 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 like use one cherry, and then just you hyper aggressively use Chomper. It's one of my favorite levels whenever it comes to day, for sure. Actually, it is my favorite level in, in day. <laughs> so yeah, I guess you could say that. 1-9, really, really fun. I love this level so much. 1-10. This is basically just another RNG check. That's that's the same with every uh uh da dash 10 level though. All of the one all of the all of the dash 10 levels, you can probably variation vary variate them depending on what kind of RNG you get. So like a good 110, you could easily put in like the top of A tier, low S tier. But a bad 110, obviously you can put in lower. In general, I think that this level is pretty nice compared to the other conveyor stages. So I like this one a lot more than the other ones. Um, I would say it's like like mid C tier, maybe like maybe it's more fun than these other two levels. So I'll put it in the top of C tier for right now. Definitely better than some of the other conveyor stages in the future though. If it's, if it's bad though, you can really, really feel the effects of this level. So you really got to be careful with this. If you get bad spawns or if you get bad RNG with your plants, you'll feel it at the end of your day. It's going to be, it won't be pretty. Let's just say that. Next up is night and let's get right in. 2-1 is a pretty okay level, I would say. In general, it's pretty fast, but that's because, uh, that's because of newspapers. So I'll put it in like B tier. I think it's, I don't think it's as fun as 1.5 in my opinion. I think it's more fun than 1.6, but less fun than 1.5. That being said, the amount of fun you're having on 2.1 relies entirely on your newspapers. So if you have four newspapers, which actually can happen, then your level is going to be like really, really slow. If you have one newspaper, it'll be about average. Uh, the newspapers are really annoying, especially if you have one more, one in, like, more than one in your preview. If you have more than one in your preview, these will be really annoying. Also, before I move on, something I want to really quickly explain is previews. You guys have seen them in Plants vs. Zombies. 
It's basically the level telling you which types of zombies are in, in the level. This also shows you how many of each zombie are supposed to spawn in terms of like kind of a ratio. It's not exactly a ratio, but it's close enough that it's comparable to one. Essentially, if you have more newspapers in your preview, more newspapers are likely to show up. That goes for Coneheads, that goes for pretty much every zombie in the game aside from like Zombonis, Catapults, Football Zombies, Gargantuars, stuff like that. But in general, more zombies equals more of that type of zombie. So if you're looking at a ton of basics, there's going to be more basics. If you're looking at like four Coneheads, there's going to be a pretty good amount of Coneheads. I will mention preview in the future, so that's why I wanted to explain it right now. 2-2. Two, two. This is basically 1-9, but with Puff Shrooms. Yeah, instead of Potato Mine, you're bringing Puff Shroom. Um, but 2-2, two, two, probably like an A tier level. Not as fun as 1-9 in my opinion, because it's at night, but you do have Puff Shrooms, so that makes it way faster than 1-9. Also, if you're able to get like a couple of repeaters down and then you can just chill for the rest of the, the level, you can get some pretty fast times on this level. It's actually quite fun if you play the level right and you get good good RNG in your first flag. I just really love the idea of like sun management and then you plant pea shooters or you plant repeaters and then you have to manage your sun to either plant more repeaters or plant choppers depending on your spawns. I, that's one of the things that I love about PvZ speedrunning is all of the management that you do like in the moment. With that said, we're going on to 2-3, which is a prediction level. Basically, we're trying to predict where the screen door will go with a potato mine. I'll throw up an example on screen real quick so that you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. If you get the prediction, your level can be faster. If you don't, then your level will be, uh, it'll be a little bit slower, but it won't be a huge amount slower. Especially if your potato mine goes on to kill a cone head, yeah, it's not going to be as bad as you think. Oh, also, one more thing is I literally hate it whenever the screen door defies logic. We base our prediction off of where the zombies spawn since they're less likely to spawn where they just did. But sometimes the screen door likes to be funny and spawn immediately in a place where it just was. Like where a zombie just was, it's just like, oh yeah, I'm going to go there because why not? And then you miss the prediction because that's not, that's not how the game works ever at all in any way. <laughs> I guess it is because it obviously happened, but that's stupid. Aside from that though, I think that this level is like meh. It's, nah, I think it's like, yeah, I think it's like here. All right, next up is 2-4. This is 2-2, two, two, but with bucket heads, fume shrooms, and grave buster. So all of those things, oh, also you get the seventh seed slot, if you didn't know. 2-4 is generally the seed slot moment. This will always be when you get the seed slot, pretty much no matter what, because of the mower value that you get out of the first uh, three night levels. Anyways, this is just a more fun 2-2 in my opinion. I think that this is like an easy A tier. Like it's more fun than 1-9 in my opinion because Cherry Bomb, you get to use Cherry Bomb, you get to use Grave Buster, which makes everything so much better. And then you also get to chomper the crap out of everything. And Fume Shrooms are really, really cheap and you can just spam the crap out of Puff Shroom. So I really like this level a lot. Also, it has, like, double sun, which is one of my favorite strategies in the game. Shout out to my survival runners. This is kind of where you also start to gain more control with, like, your instance, your planting, your sun management. So I really like this level because it kind of kickstarts all of the other levels that I think are, like, my favorites because they're super good. All right, next up is, well, 2-5. This is literally an auto-scroller, so I hate you. Yeah, 2-5, if you don't know, is an auto-scroller level. You can't make it any faster. You can make it slower. Either you do everything frame perfectly or you just lose time. And by everything, I mean the cherry bomb at the end. That's about it. And get lucky with grave spawns. Yeah, I just don't like this level because you can't make it any faster. Next up is 2-6. This level has the football zombie. Guess what? It's another prediction. This is better than 2-3, but it's still C tier because it's really, really easy to get caught up in trying to predict the football when you have Hypnoshroom. You're bringing Hypnoshroom on this level, keep that in mind. So if you're caught up in trying to predict where the uh, footballer is, then you will probably miss some opportunities and forget to plant Sun Shrooms, but also you might just forget to predict. Regardless, I think that this level is better than 2-3, so it deserves more credit. Also because the football zombie is way more interesting than a screen door. C tier, better than 2-3. All right, next up is 2-7, and this is like my favorite night level, one of my favorite night levels for sure. and. It is because scaredies, <laughs> I just have to be honest, 
I love Scaredy Shroom so much. The use of Scaredy Shroom, Fume Shroom, and Puff Shroom all at once. Oh, it's so good. You cannot deny that this is the like one of the greatest levels when it comes to nighttime and when it comes to actually like executing because you have to figure out when you should manage your scaredy shrooms, then make sure that you don't kill your sun economy, then start planting fume shrooms after the first flag, also make sure that you have enough sun to grave bust, save some sun for like cherry bombs, and then find some hypnos within that. So I just love all of the things that you have to manage all at once. That's just what my brain goes to, I guess. That's my ADHD brain just loves clicking things and managing like 45 different things at once, even though I suck at it sometimes. Regardless, this is a freaking awesome level. I love this level so much. All right, next up is 2-8, and this is this is the most annoying prediction level, in my opinion, because here's the thing. The Dancer Zombie, which the Dancer arrives on 2-8, the Dancer Zombie can only spawn in rows 2, 3, and 4. And if you get bad grave layout, you just won't be able to predict it, unless you have Michael Jackson. But even then, it's like, if you miss the prediction, you're losing like a lot of time. It's a very, very large amount of time. Let me rank it first before I go on about it. I, this is probably D tier, like maybe not as bad as these two. Definitely, definitely here. Definitely, uh, definitely the top of D tier, I would say. Regardless, it's still annoying. Even with the smaller amount of zombies, the smaller amount of zombies in the final wave is made up for with the dancer zombie summoning backups. So again, if you don't get the dancer within the cherry bomb, you're gonna have a long struggle against killing this guy. I just, in general, don't really like this level, but that's also because of the, the prediction. And to top it all off with Knight, this is 2-9. And let's like, like, let's, let's, let's make something clear. This is just 2-7, but with Doomshroom. So like, it only gets better. Doomshroom is a great solution for the final wave, and also a great solution for any annoying flag that comes in the- or in any annoying wave that comes in the second flag. If you see, like, two coneheads, you just doomshroom them, and then you move on. And then you're planting, you know, again, you're planting, uh, fume shrooms, scaredy shrooms, puff shrooms, keeping everything off cooldown, making sure that you have enough sun to keep grave busting, and then also getting fume shrooms- or, uh, hypno shrooms down. It's just so much just so much little management things, and I love it. These are, these are definitely my favorite night levels for sure. And now we move on to 210. You could call this one a nuclear power plant with how many doom shrooms it gives you. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is literally just where all the doom shrooms live. This is also a conveyor stage, so keep that in mind. I will say it's much better than 110. So I will put it, I think it's more fun than 2-1 because it's got more diversity in plants. So again, 210 in general, really fun stage. Not as fun as Walnut Bowling in my opinion, but still a really fun stage. I just find that this stage is really weird, especially when it comes to the weights of the plants. The weight of a plant is basically how likely it is to show up on a belt. It's basically the percentage chance that you have to get the plant. For Knight, there's like five plants that are 20 weight. That's probably not true, but Regardless, there's a lot of plants that have the same weight, so you're really likely to get many of the plants, and that that makes for some good plant diversity, but it also makes for some really weird 210s. You'll never get a 210 that looks similar to a 210 that you've gotten in the past. Much like 110, it a lot of it comes down to what plants you get when, so you have to rely on kind of the Doom Shroom RNG aspect for that. And also how many like hypno shrooms you're getting because those are instants and they go really fast. This can be a, a, a really good stage or a really bad stage. So I'm going to rank it in general. I think it's better than 110 though. So and there you go. That's night. So let's move on to pool. And boy, oh boy, do we have a banger to start with, huh? This is a terrible version of 1-8. This is like the bottom. I, I don't like playing 3-1 at all. Just let me get that out of the way. Double mower manip doesn't matter, so you can't compress all of the zombies into a really nice clean cherry bomb, but you can kind of if you do like three mowers, which is ridiculous. Also, not to mention ambush zombies. Those don't exist in day levels. They do here, and I hate them. A lot. If you get some really far back cone heads, 
Uh, you're gonna be looking for a cherry bomb back there, but you might need the cherry bomb somewhere else to deal with a cone head that's on the other side of the screen. This is where you can see the issue. Double Marmanip is really important here, but it doesn't always work. You've got to try to figure out the best way to deal with that final wave, because that final wave is annoying. Regardless, this level is very low D tier. I think that it's bordering S, uh, bordering F tier here. It's really, really bad and really, really awkward. Moving on, we've got 3-2, and this is where we start with the kind of like fun arc of the game, if that makes any sense. So 3-2, for example, you have squash, potato mine, cherry, and chomper. That's four always available instant plants except for Cherry Bomb, which you only use a couple of times. This is a two-flag level, by the way, but it doesn't have Kelp. Either way, Squash is a very good substitute, and isn't really a substitute, it's just better. So I think that this level, in general, is probably just A tier, easily. Just probably the top of A tier. Again, I like the these night levels more because I just like them in general. Also, they have Doom Shroom. This doesn't have Doomstream. I really like Doomstream a lot. Next up, we've got 3-3, and this is where you encounter snorkel zombies. To be completely honest, this level is fun, but snorkels are not. And again, you do not have kelp for this level, so you just kind of have to hope that you're getting like as little snorkels as possible. Now, snorkels don't have that much health. With that said, this level is still like you know, relatively B tier ish, I would say. I would I definitely think it's more fun than 1 3 and 1 6, that's for sure. Even even more so than 2 1. So I will say that it's like B tier for sure. I definitely think that this is one of the f more fun levels in the game. It's just less fun than 3 2 because of snorkels and also you may or may not have eight seed slots by this point, depending on if you got an early diamond. Next up is 3 4. And this, one of my favorite levels in the entire game. Let me let me list let me list out why. Three flags of non-stop aggression, sun management, pe repeater management, instant management. You gotta keep track of your potato mine, your kelp, your squash, your chomper, your cherry bomb, everything. There are so many ways to deal with zombies, and it's so so satisfying when you get a fast time on this stage. This stage is so much fun. I love playing this stage so much. And the same goes for most of these three flag pool levels. I love playing them because they're just, they're just a lot of fun. And there's so much management that my brain just goes crazy with it. I get a little dopamine hit every time I plant a chomper down or kill like four zombies with a squash or something. Very easily the top of S tier for now. Next up is 3-5 and this level just kind of exists. That's about it. It's another conveyor stage, so it's, again, RNG-based. We're gonna put it about... We'll put it in the middle of C tier. It's just kind of a, a... It's just kind of a whatever stage that exists. If you're gonna play this level, it's just gonna be a passing by level. You're not gonna really comment on it other than, you know, counting to 10 twice, which I hope we all went to kindergarten. That's pretty much all you're doing in the speedrun here. So, again, just whatever, C tier. Next up is 3-6, and this is in a similar spot as 3-3, three, three, but I think it's better. And I think it's better, I think it's better than 2-10 for sure. Um, actually, it's better than 1-5 as well. It's definitely better than 3-3 three, three for sure. But the thing is, this level has Zombonies and also a lot of normal zombies. Let me explain something real quick. If a Zomboni spawns, but doesn't create a long enough ice track for bobsleds to spawn. When the bobsled actually comes, like whenever the game tries to spawn a bobsled wave, instead of spawning the bobsled wave, they'll just spawn like a ton of normal zombies instead, which normally I'd be really happy about, but we only have one repeater in every row. And you can add some repeaters here and there, but you won't really have that many by the end of the level. And so you're probably gonna get overwhelmed with a lot of body blocking in this level. That's kind of the only factor that comes into this level. You do actually want coneheads so that you can use your instance properly. That being said, it's a two flag level so it's not as long and you get a little bit of you know a little bit of a breather whenever it comes to whenever the zombonis spawn it's a good level but i wouldn't say that it's one of like one that i'm like really fond of particularly now we get to three seven three flags again woohoo 
Woo! Yeah, let's go. Honestly, again, this is definitely S tier because three flags, you know how I am about these, these three flag levels. Also, there's bucket heads to counteract the normal zombie overload that you'll get whenever a zomboni doesn't spawn a large enough ice track. That way, this, the game will be less incentivized to spawn a bobsled and will just spawn a bucket head instead that you can easily chomp or, or squash and get out of the way. So yeah, 3-7 is so much fun. I love 3-7. And next up, we're actually moving on to 3-8, which is Dolphins. I want to put it in B tier, but I think it's like the top, like the lowest point of A tier. You basically use kelps to counteract the zombies. So, you know, what you're going to do is just use your kelps, stack them all up during the first flag, hopefully not use too many, and then have, a, you know, a couple of them to use on dolphins later on. Uh, this isn't really a bad, this isn't a bad two flag level in my opinion. So better than two six or no, sorry, better than three six, better than three three. So A tier you go. And next up is my all time, one of my all time favorite levels in general is three nine. And this goes right up to S tier because here's the thing. I love whenever a game gives me plant diversity and strategy diversity is one of the things that 3.9 has going for it. Right now, we have like three strategies that you can use. You can use cherry torchwood. You can also use potato mine cherry. And instead of using torchwood, you just use the same plant selection as you've been using. And then you can also use cherry jalapeno, which means that you can just skip out the torchwood and the potato mine and just use jalapeno instead. This is essentially like, I would compare this to picking poison, but instead you're picking like which ride and an amusement park you want to ride. Like, which one do you want to go on? They're all fun, it doesn't really matter. S tier for sure, easily. And then we get to 310, and I will just be the first one to say it. This is a bummer. It really is. Actually, I think it's really bad. I really, well, actually it's not that bad. Sorry. It's, it's like, it's very close. The thing with 310 is that it's got so much variation in its times. Again, it's a conveyor stage, RNG is a huge factor. What you don't want is to get no re no like no three peters. You want to get three peters at the start, and then you want to get torchwoods a little bit after that. But that usually doesn't happen. So you are usually gonna be looking at like a, a six minute 310, maybe like 530-ish. And and this can vary so much. Like you can get a sub five. 310 if you get lucky enough. Problem is, you gotta get lucky enough. I just don't think that it's as fun to speedrun as the rest of the conveyor stages, because the other conveyor stages at least have, like, some kind of saving grace. Like, 110 has a lot of firepower in it. You got Repeater, Snowpy, and Pea Shooter. At least you'll be able to get something. 210 has a lot of plants that are the same weight, which means that you'll be able to at least get something. 310 usually just doesn't give you anything at all. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure three Peters are higher weighted. I might be wrong about that, and Bulbasaur will comment a comment uh, telling me that I'm terrible at the game and that I'm trash and I should stop speedrunning this game. <laughs> no, but 310 is probably the worst, uh, the worst conveyor stage out of 110 and 210 for sure. So, D tier you go. I don't like you at all. Also, can you please give me three Peters the next time I try to run? Please, please. I would love to get three Peters, and I'd love to get, you know, some semblance of a defense. That'd be great. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I, I got a little carried away there. Next up is 4-1, and we're getting to the fog stages, which fog is, you know, relatively fun. It's not as fun as pool, though, but it there are some stages that are more fun than the pool levels, for sure. 4-1 is short and sweet. It's nice. I like it. And you, all you have to do is plant puff shrooms, plant some, plant some sun shrooms. The problem that I have with this level is you can't see, but the fog isn't too bad here. So you don't really have to just find a squash. You can squash wave nine. Generally, that's what you want to do. If you can use squash earlier than that, you can do that too, but that probably kills your sun economy a little bit. Just be a little careful because fog stages are infamous for not having enough sun. Nice and simple. Probably around B tier. I would say it's more fun than... I would say it's more fun than 2-1, but not as fun as 3-3. Next up is 4-2, and this is the first two flag level in Fog. This is just fun because Scaredies are cool, and Sea Shrooms are also pretty cool because it's Fog, and they're free. But also because two flag levels are pretty fun, 
and this is generally just not bad to deal with at all. You, what you do here is you bring, like, you bring Plantern and you bring Squash and you Doom Shroom at some point in the second flag. The Scaredies will be able to take care of everything else. As long as you're planning them off cooldown, that'll be, it, it's, it's pretty quick, usually. I mean, fog stages usually are pretty quick, but regardless, this is a good stage. I would say that it's probably like low A tier. No, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I I'll say it's low A tier. Not as fun as 1-8 in my opinion, though. Actually, no, more fun than 1-8, not as fun as 3-8. All right, next up is 4-3. Um, and all I have to say about this is uh, Cactus bad, lol. Okay, so it's in D tier. And the reason why it's in D tier is because there's a little bit of a variable that doesn't usually exist, and it's because it's unlikely. The thing with the balloon zombie is, we usually just let it go to a mower, but it has enough HP to be just slightly over 50%. So if you kill the normal zombie, you have to pray that your 50% rule is met. Because again, 50% rule is between 35% and 50% of the wave's HP, so if you get a generous rule, it'll start earlier. Just because of that little thing, you're always thinking, am I going to get the bad, am I going to get the bad rule? Is it going to be high enough? Am I not going to get enough damage? And yeah, if you get the bad 50% rule, it's just really slow. That's pretty much it. Next up is 4-4. Four, 4-4 four. Four, four is two flags, but it's more annoying in my opinion, because you can't see until the second flag. And the fog here is actually pretty bad. So the thing is, you're you're bringing Plo you're bringing Blover instead of Plantern here. That's the main thing because there's two flags and there's balloon zombies. So you can't just wait out the balloon zombies in the final wave like you can in one flag levels. You won't have enough mowers to deal with all the balloons unless you get really lucky. Regardless, we still bring Blover because it's more consistent anyways. But again, the fog in the first flag is probably what sets this one out for me, in my opinion. I just think Plantern is a better source of vision than Blover is. I think it's more fun. I would say it's like here-ish. I'll put it here. I'll put it below 3-3. I think 3-3 is fun because you can see. All right, next up is 4-5. Uh, C tier, I guess. You could probably switch this, like, you could probably put this anywhere between C, B, and D, and I would just be like, oh, yeah, sure, that's whatever. Because I suck at this stage, and Vase Breaker is not one of my strong suits. Maybe if I do puzzle speedruns, I'll be better at Vase Breaker, but for now, right now, I haven't done any puzzle speedruns, so I suck. I would also say that Tunnel Vision is probably my biggest skill issue with 4-5. Next up is 4-6, and remember what I said about 2-8 being the most annoying? Yeah, I lied. This is actually, like, one of the worst stages, in my opinion. Like I said, I hate miners a lot. I really don't like the miner zombie at all, and you can try to predict. The thing is, though, with the prediction, you're just completely guessing most of the time. I've never even had- I've never had an instance where I was like, I think that this is the most likely spot. I'm usually guessing, and maybe that's because I have a skill issue, but you can also just choose to ignore the miner and just squash it instead, but that also loses you more time. So going for the prediction is generally worth it if you get it, then you get it. If you don't, then you don't. Next up is 4-7, and this is actually not my jam. I think that this is probably, again, like, I don't know, man. It's two flags, but it sucks because there's miners, and also you're bringing Chomper because there's bucket heads, and you have to plant a lot of sun shrooms. It's more fun because there's Chomper. Like, that's why. I would also say it's more fun than 310 because 310 just generally sucks. I might put 310 in F tier because I don't like it at all. Yeah, F tier's looking a bit lonely. We're gonna put it, we're gonna put 310 in F tier. <laughs> 4 7, just if you get a lot of diggers, again, there's a lot of variation here. If you get a lot of miners, you lose a lot of time. If you don't get a lot of miners, then you don't lose as much time. But the problem with that is. If you don't get as many miners, you can probably get, you know, bucket heads or cone heads, which are significantly easier to deal with. Don't don't get me wrong. But the problem is it's actually kind of hard to get sun production up here because it's generally harder to manage on fog stages. But also this stage is more inconsistent, so I just don't like it as much. All right, next up is 4-8. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I I had to search up what was in this this stage. I completely forgot. So, um, there's Pogo. <laughs> so the Pogo zombie is in this. Again, I would say that this is kind of just the same fog, like, level, except for copy-pasted. Like, 4-1 just got copy-pasted, like, four times. So yeah, we just get- a, the new zombie gets introduced later on in the level, 
and then you just use a squash on it or whatever because you can. So yeah, again, forgettable level, probably just middle of C tier because I completely forgot about it and I... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, I completely forgot what was in this stage. Next up is 4-9, and I'm really gonna be honest, I wish I could say that this stage was more fun. The sun management here is actually really hard. You get down like 16 sh sun shrooms, that's generally your range. But the problem is getting there is really, really difficult because you have to spend your sun on blovers, you have to spend your sun on magnets, you have to spend your sun on getting scaredy shrooms in the pool, getting, you know, scaredy shrooms off of the pool. Then you also have to spend your sun on one doom shroom at least. And on top of all of this, you have to make sure that you're planning more sun shrooms to get more sun. You can see why the sun management is a little bit harder on this stage than every other stage. I still think that this is a pretty decent stage, I wouldn't put it like D tier or anything. It's probably like high C tier. Next up is 410, and I just hate this level with all of my being. So let's let's run it down. One, you can't see. Two, it's a conveyor stage, completely reliant on RNG. Three, magnets are a weight of like five, I think, which is the most crucial part about speedrunning this level. So if you don't get miners, you have a slow level. Four, there's miner zombies. I hate miners. Five, there's balloon zombies. I don't like balloon zombies in this stage because Blover is also a way to 5. That's a little bit more redundant because you get a lot of cacti, but I don't care. I still don't like it. And another reason is because sometimes you won't get the plants that you need at the right time. The final reason is that there's no instance. That's, that's a really big one for me. There's no instance at all in this level, so you can't just really quickly kill something. You have to wait for it to slowly die. Same thing goes for the final wave and the ninth wave. And that just, uh, I hate this level so much. <laughs> Next up is 5-1, and we're getting into roof now. Yeah, so 5-1 is always awkward, and I think that I'm gonna put this level in, compared to every other flag, one flag level in the game, it's the slowest by far. Maybe comparable to 3, not 1-3, not three. where's 3-1? Three Where did I put it? Oh, I put it here. I don't think I'll, I'll put it like with 3-1. No, no, no. I'm putting it, I'm putting it, I'm putting it here. It's not as fun as 4-6 or 4-7. Even though I hate minor zombies, 5-1 is just, 5-1 is just weird. I don't like 5-1 because it's awkward, always. And there's no way to avoid it. Next up is 5-2. And the thing about 5-2 is starfruits are really fun, but they're also pretty tricky. So they're deceptively hard. I always mess up starfruits because towards the end of the run, I'm tired and I don't really have the same choice making capabilities as I do in like pool, for example. So I end, usually end up making a mistake or two. But with this in mind, I think that this is still a pretty fun level despite that. Um, I would say it's more fun than walnut bowling. So I would say that B tier is right where it sits. Not as fun as 3-6 though, because starfruits are harder, but also repeaters on roof is like actually terrible. So next up is 5-3 and this is kind of just 5-2, but copy pasted. The difference is that there's ladders and less uh, flower pots. The thing with the less flower pots is that it actually makes it a little bit harder. For 5-3, you actually have to spend 75 sun on a sunflower because of the flower pot. So that makes you think a little bit more, but even then, ladder zombies are pretty fun. So I think I'll put this, yeah, I'll put this above 5-2. It's 5-2, but a little bit better. Oh boy, we're getting into the fun part of roof. 5-4 is probably one of the more fun roof levels, in my opinion. The thing is, I love gloom strats. Gloom pumpkins is just one of my favorite combos in the game. More fun than 1-9, definitely, probably the top of A tier. I would say that these levels, the S tier levels are way, way more fun because in general, they just always tend to be. Because in general, pool levels and night levels always tend to be more fun than roof levels because roof is freaking hard. But with 5-4, the thing is you can actually die in this level. And I personally really like the, the fun factor of risk, you know, if, if that makes any sense. So risk and reward, if that makes sense. Like you can risk it all and maybe die to a pogo or you can risk it all and get a really good time. 5-4 early pogos don't really happen all that often, so generally it's better to just use the pumpkin glooms. Next up is 5-5, and I'll be honest with you, I'm putting it- I'm not putting it in F tier because this level, for me, 
is actually pretty fun. I think that this level is here for me. I think that it's not as fun as like the majority of the levels, but I think it's more fun than some of these lower levels. And the reason why is because when it comes to 5-5, there's only four plants on the belt. Chompers, flower pots, pumpkins, and cherry bombs. So if you can manipulate chompers, then you can get some you can get some pretty good luck with cherries. You can also get some pretty bad luck and just get pumpkins over and over again. And you can also get flower pots. But if you flower pot manip, then you're gonna get chomper after chomper after chomper, and you know, with some pumpkins and cherry bombs mixed in. So this level is honestly more skill based than a lot of the other conveyor belt levels because it has fewer plants. That makes it more fun in my opinion because I'm actually decent at 5-5. The thing is, the weird thing about this level is it's still not good. It's still not fun to play. Like every time I go into 5-5, I'm like, oh, my run could die here, but it's not F tier. That is reserved for 410. Next up is 5-6 and this can go two different ways. If you choose pumpkin glooms, then you're going to be looking at a risky time. Actually, not too risky. This this level, you can pumpkin gloom pretty easily. I'm going to put it in A tier. I'm going to put it a, not as fun as 5-4. You actually have a risk of getting one of your glooms squashed by a catapult. You can prevent it by doom shrooming around the time that the, the first flag big wave comes, because like the Zamboni, it's guaranteed on wave 11. So if you do the right doom timing, you can actually kill the catapult before it kills one of your glooms. The problem is you have to do that before wave 11 and the timing is up is pretty tight. So one way or another, you might be losing a gloom. And yeah, so that's never fun. I just think that 5-4 is more fun because A, it's three, it's three flags. Three flags is really fun. And then B, your your glooms don't usually die that easily on 5-4. But, you know, you can still, you can still, like, garlic, you can use garlic glooms uh, for most of the last levels, except for 5-9. But we'll talk about 5-9 in a second. 5-7. I'm gonna put 5-7 in C tier. And the reason why is because I haven't really found a good way to, like, deal with it, if that makes sense. Star fruits are a little bit slow, but you can do with them. Garlic glooms is one of the more consistent ways. And then pumpkin glooms is where things get wild. Because here's the thing, you've got catapults on this stage and catapults are hard to deal with whenever it comes to three flag levels, because you never know when one's gonna spawn. One could spawn, there could be like one spawning, one wave, and then the next wave you get another spawn. And then it's just, they're killing your glooms. And that's just sad. And then you lose two glooms for no reason. And then you have to survive off of one gloom for such a long time. And it's just better to garlic gloom, in my opinion, for this stage. But the risk is there for the giant reward. If you successfully pumpkin gloom 5-7, there's a massive time save at the end that you will be so happy that you <laughs> pumpkin gloomed for. Next up is 5-8. And in general, I would say that this stage is about, you know, about average. I would say it's, I would say it's around, you know, five, six area. I wouldn't say it's as five, it's fun. It's not as fun because you have to deal with the gargantuar and you never want to deal with the gargantuar, but it's easy to pumpkin gloom this level. So this level pretty safe to pumpkin gloom on. So I would say that this stage is a pretty, uh, pretty good thumbs up for me. Next up is the all powerful five nine. So let's talk about some of the things in five nine. First of all, you have to decide whether or not you want to pumpkin gloom and if you do pumpkin gloom, then you have to be really on your toes because things will come to kill your glooms at every second. There's bucket heads, jack in the boxes, catapults, and gargantuars. Those are the four things that you generally have to be concerned about. The reason why is because bucket heads have a lot of HP and you don't have magnet. Catapults and gargantuars can just squash your glooms, and then jack in the boxes obviously can explode. The thing with 5-9 is that it has a potential to spawn a gargantuar during the third flag like later on during the third flag. So if you're not prepared for that, you will not be prepared for the final wave either because you'll have to use squash on that guard. Uh, uh, you'll have to use squash on that guard. So if you get the extra guard, you'll have to use squash on that guard and not be able to use it on the final wave guard get sure, which makes things slower. In general, 5-9 can be a coin flip. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it in B tier. I think that the high risk, the high stakes at the end of the run is kind of fun, but I think that it gets punished because if you actually do lose your run, it's really sad because you just wasted like three and a half hours of your life and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> Trust me, I would know. And finally, 510. This is the very end of the run. 
So what I'll say is, among the conveyor belt stages, it's way more meticulous and way more skillful. I don't even know all of the little things about this level that uh, like some of the other runners know, but I just know that this level is very skill-based and very mechanical. So you have to know a lot of things to perform well in this level. Now, you can get luck, and that helps a lot, but the chances of doing like a three cycle on Zomboss, they increase dramatically if you know a lot of the mechanics of this level. So what I'll say is, it's pretty fun. I would say it's more fun than 5-9, but not as fun as 3-3. So there you have it. This is my opinion on every speedrun level in the adventure mode, in any percent. Again, some of these placements probably can be switched around. I personally haven't put a huge amount of thought into this, so I might do what I did with the last video, look at this tier list a little bit, and switch around some of the ideas depending on what comes to my mind. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, if you like this video, press the like button and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss my future tier list videos, which are definitely coming out. Hit that notification bell so that you don't miss those tier list uploads, because these are really important, guys. You gotta see what my opinion is. And you've also gotta post your opinion in the comments. But of course, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a freaking awesome day.